So one of the most controversial aspects of the creation of Hawa, of Eve, is what was she created from? And there are some very condescending things that are said about Eve and, and, and are used by extension to degrade women and to belittle women and to portray women as being inherently deficient. Uh, this all comes from, uh, obviously, the, the story from the Bible, which is from Genesis, that Eve specifically, Hawa, was specifically created from Adam alayhi salam's rib. Okay, so the idea of Eve being created from the rib of Adam, Adam is, the, uh, is a biblical story. It's from Genesis. And by extension, it finds its way in our tradition as well. Now, the Prophet ﷺ never said that Eve was specifically created from the rib of Adam alayhi So what are we, what, what's our take on this entire thing? Number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِي that we have created man with the, you know, in the best creation and fashioned him in the best creation. So what that means is both men and women were created without deficiency. Okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ We have honored all of the children of Adam alayhi salam. So that's, that's to be established that wherever this discussion goes, that men and women were created in the same fashion, in the sense that they are both created with the same level of completeness. All right, which is why Allah Subhanahu wa says, "Inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu." That we have created you first and foremost from male and female, and then made you nations and tribes. So Allah addresses, um, you know, misogynism or sexism as well as racism. In fact, He addresses sexism before racism, and at the end of it all, "Inna akramakum عند الله أتقاكم." The most noble of you in the sight of Allah is the one who has the most taqwa. All right, the one who has the most piety, which is unseen, it's in the heart. So no matter what your gender is or what your race is, you have the same ability to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to have a sense of completeness. Now, what is the creation of Hawa? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya you nas, inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says um, that He created you min nafsin wahida. In the first ayah of Surah An-Nisa, the fourth chapter, Allah says He created you from one soul. مِن نَفْسٍ وَاحِدَةٍ وَخَلَقَ مِنْهَا زَوْجَهَا Okay, and he created from it its spouse. Alright? And so here's the question. مِنْهَا here, in the first uh, verse of Surah Nisa, خَلَقَ مِنْهَا He created from it its spouse. What is it? What is مِنْهَا? And this is where the, the first difference of opinion appears amongst the scholars. The majority of the scholars say that Hawa was created from Adam alayhi salam, that she was extracted and created from Adam alayhi salam, which is again her name because she was created from something that was high, something that was living. Uh, some of the scholars say Minha, okay, refers to the same type of dirt that Adam alayhi salam was created from. Okay, so what Allah used to create Adam alayhi salam from, He also used the same thing to create Hawa from. So it's a, it's a, it's a, open difference of opinion and discussion and there is really nothing conclusive in that regard. What we do have is a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari where the Prophet ﷺ says the woman was created from the rib. He doesn't specify Hawa, he doesn't specify Eve, he simply says the woman was created from the rib. Now the discussion is, was the Prophet ﷺ employing an analogy or was the Prophet ﷺ speaking literally? All right. Could it possibly be an analogy? Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, insanu min ajal, That man was created from haste, right? So it's not literal, but it's an analogy. And th what would suggest that this is an analogy is that in one of the narrations in Bukhari as well, it's also completely authentic. The Prophet says, Al mar'atu kal That the woman is like the rib. In aqamtaha kasartaha. That if you try to straighten it, you will break it. All right? What is the context of this hadith that the Prophet ﷺ is mentioning? So you guys have to listen very, very carefully to me inshallah ta'ala so that you don't start to derive your conclusions. Please don't stop the video now and go into an outrage. This hadith is actually very beautiful because number one, it's from the khutbah of the Prophet ﷺ in Arafah. So it's you know just a few months before, a couple of months before the Prophet ﷺ passed away, the Prophet ﷺ's farewell hajj. And the Prophet ﷺ was very much in tune with his society and Rasulullah ﷺ emphasized family issues, right? So the Prophet ﷺ says in this final khutbah of his on the day of Arafah, he says, أَيُّهَا nas إِسْتَوْسُ بِالنِّسَاءِ خَيْرًا O people, treat your wives well. Treat your wives well. فَإِنَّ الْمَرْأَةَ خُلِقَتْ مِنْ ضِلَعٍ 
For verily the woman was created from a rib. And he said, and the most bent part of the rib is the top of it. Now realize here, he did not say وسلم, that the woman is the most bent part of the rib or that she's created from the most crooked part of the rib. He simply said the most crooked part of the rib, the most bent part of the rib is the top of it. He said, وسلم, if you try to straighten it, you will break it. And if you leave it, then the, then it will it will remain in its place. So he said, So act kindly, deal kindly with your wives. Now, if you listen to that, you say, well, what does that exactly mean, right? Not a single sharh, not a single explanation of this hadith is that the woman is inherently deficient as opposed to the man, that she's bent, that she's crooked. And, you know, it goes to the, you know, to the general idea of assigning evil to Eve, which we'll talk about inshallah ta'ala uh, next time where we talk about Eve and this particular idea of assigning evil exclusively to her and, and to women in general, right? That, that women are inherently deficient or crooked and evil. This, this is not a concept in Islam. So that's definitely not the sharh of the hadith. It's not the explanation of the hadith. It's not the context of the hadith and what the Prophet ﷺ was saying. What was the Prophet ﷺ saying? Either he was being literal, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and saying that the woman was created from the rib, okay? Not the most crooked part, but that she was created from the rib. And he simply went on to explain what the, what the most crooked or what the most bent part of the rib was. Or the Prophet was, was using an analogy. And most of the scholars said he was using an analogy. And what is that analogy? What was the Prophet saying? He was saying, stop trying to change and mold your wives into what you want them to be. Because there is an impatience. And Imam al nawi rahimahullah, in the explanation of the hadith, he says the Prophet ﷺ was addressing the impatience that men had with their wives in trying to you know, make them exactly as they wanted them to be, right? You are supposed to act like this, you're supposed to do this, you're supposed to do that, right? Addressing all of their habits, addressing everything. We're not talking about haram and addressing things that are forbidden and growing together and, and pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and distancing ourselves from all that that is considered disobedience to Allah. But the idea of trying to mold your wife into exactly what you want her to be, right? So the Prophet ﷺ is saying, look, you're not going to get the perfect woman, all right? Just like you're not the perfect man, <laughs> all right? You're not going to, and he was using the example of the rib because just like if you took a rib and you tried to just straighten it out like that, you're gonna end up breaking someone and killing yourself, okay? And the Prophet ﷺ says in a hadith in Muslim, he said, so leave it bent and that is better for you. Otherwise, if you break it, it is divorce. So the Prophet ﷺ was saying breaking it is divorce. So the Prophet ﷺ was saying, look, everyone is going to have certain traits that you don't like and you don't agree with, but this is part of who she is. And just like you have your issues, she has her issues, right? Some of the scholars, they said that the woman's nature is more complex than the man's nature. And that's not to you know, to, to, to buy into this concept that, that women are crazy human beings and insane and emotional wrecks and men are the ones that are logical and know what they're doing. No, but that uh, a lot of times men have a difficult time understanding women, right? They don't, you know, the nature of the man and the woman is different and men have a difficult time understanding that. And the Prophet ﷺ is saying not to interfere with that and not to pretend like you understand everything because there's certainly going to be gaps here. You're not going to be able to understand. Uh, the third one, which, which I find very beautiful, the third explanation that I was able to find from the ulama, was that the woman has been created in a way to protect the vital organs, right? The way that the rib protects certain things. And to try to change that might endanger those organs. And one of the beautiful things that one of the imams uh, said, he said that, um, you know, a lot of times the things that we dislike in our spouses are actually the things that are protecting the marriage and protecting the household. They're actually good things for the household, good things for the marriage, good things for the relationship, which is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Asa and takrahu shay, you might dislike something. And Allah puts much blessing in the very quality that you dislike. So there are certain qualities that you might not like about your spouse. But they're what's holding things down. That's what's keeping everything in its place. And those things actually have a lot of khayr in them. They have a lot of good in them. And so the message of this hadith is not to say that women are crooked ribs or, or, or inherently crooked. That's not the understanding of the hadith. The Prophet ﷺ was using an example. Like he liked, he liked to make analogies, sallallahu alayhi wa as he used to do with many different things. 
And he was saying, don't try to change your wife and mold her into what you want her to be. Understand, be compassionate, you know, uh, grow together. We all have our deficiencies and we shouldn't expect our spouses to be perfect. Instead, you know, we should, we should uh, mutually try to deal with those deficiencies, grow together and be understanding when there, are, when there are things that we are not capable of understanding. So long as those things are not displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't entail any form of haram. So it could be literal or it could be an analogy. Either way, there is no suggestion whatsoever, which we'll talk about next time, inshallah, of evil coming from women or, or deficiency uh, specifically being assigned to women uh, in a way that they would be more deficient than men in any way. Rather, we all have our deficiencies and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to complete us uh, through one another so we can grow together in good and in patience and all that is pleasing. Allahumma ameen.